Hi everyone, it's Anya here and I'm back with another video for Ophelia Talks and today we are going to be remaking my grandma's star blanket. So you probably have seen these blankets already in my video that I did with my mum in the summer when we looked at all the blankets that my grandma made. Well, my mum had two of those star blankets and I have two of them as well. So... Yes, she made at least four of them and I think it's the ideal blanket to make uh, because my grandma here, she used various colours, which is perfectly all right. Uh, you can use one colour, various colours, they're small bits that you make, ideal stash busting um, and then you put all these stars on and the stars again are to use up small amounts of yarn if you wanted to. So this is one that my mucca made in 2009. She used to put these labels on and she also lined this blanket. So that's exactly what we are going to do as well. We're going to line it, we're going to decorate it with stars, we're going to put it together and we're going to put a nice border on it. So lots of work but so worth it because it's going to be a wonderful blanket. So this is the blanket up close and we are going to recreate the squares, we're going to recreate the stars and then we will put it together. So this blanket is not that big, it's more like a play blanket really. Um, so yeah, let's get started on that. So I have a box of um, squares that my grandma did so these are the squares i have a whole box of them which i really need to put together as a blanket so we will do that soon and i sort of use this to work out um how big uh, and what stitches etc this was so i try to make it in um, the ice yarns in the saver but <laughs> look <laughs> that was far too big um and then i made it in the uh, dk a special uh, style craft special DK and look that's too small so then I found this one here so it's an ice yarns and it's called Gonka and it's sort of you know in between being not as thin as the DK but not as thick as the saver so it's a nice size in between and yes look I have made this and it is it is practically the same size as my grandma's squares. So yes, it is always very difficult not only to find the same yarn, but also, you know, you each and every one has their own individual tension and the way we work our stitches, so it makes a difference. So I am going to show you how to make the square first of all, okay? And then I am going to show you how I did these. Now I have prepared so I have um, made all my squares, bar one, of course, because that's the one I'm going to make with you. So here I've got all my squares. I am going to make a blanket of four by four squares. So it will be about a meter by a meter. So my, my play blanket. Um, and as you can see, I have put three stars on every blank, on every square, because, um, yeah, grandma did... Look, she did them all over. Um, but, you know, the work, I mean, honestly, the amount of work involved, it's unbelievable. So, yes, I decided to just do three. And I think that's going to have a nice effect as well. So, let's get started on doing these squares. Okay, so I've got my uh, gonka yarn. I am going to use a four to go with it. I'm going to start with a slip knot, insert my hook, tighten it up, and I am going to do 35 chains. So let's start chaining. Two, three, four, five. <laughs> So I now have my 35 chains. We are now going to chain three. So one, two, three. Then we are going to go and count back one, two, three, four, five, six. In the sixth chain, 
you are going to put a double crochet so pick up both the loops yarn over and do a double crochet this has made a first little box then we are going to chain one skip one into the next chain to do your double crochet chain one skip into the next chain one skip into the next and you do that all along your line and you should have 17 boxes that you make okay so i will see you at the end of the line <laughs> So I'm nearly there. Skip one and into that very first chain here. Just a little bit harder to get into, but yeah. Let's just try and get into it. There we go. Okay, so I have now 17 boxes and I am going to chain up three, turn and I'm going to put my first double crochet on top of this first double crochet here. So now we are going to do another six double crochets along the line. So in total we're doing seven double crochets. So this is number one. Then we go into the box here to do the second one. Then the third one is on top of the double crochet. Then the next one into, on top into there we go so we've got six and then the last one here is on top of that there we go okay now we do a chain and now we do another seven double crochets so again we start on top of this double crochet here and then around on top around on top around And that makes seven. Again, chain one and skip one to start on top of that double crochet again there. And we keep going like that. We do another seven here as well. And after a while it gets easy because you sort of get used to doing the amounts. Okay, so there we go. I'm gonna move that <laughs> and again a chain one skip this one here again on top of that double crochet for another seven double crochets there we go and you always finish on top of a double crochet so that helps as well and then here at the end here we are going to do another little box so you chain one yarn over find the top of that chain two that you did earlier and make your little box there okay so this is where we're at now so in a way it's a repeat of a pattern but we just need to establish that repeat so first of all again chain three one two three then start doing double crochets on top of the double crochets this time we are doing three double crochets so one 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 then we do a chain one we skip a double crochet and we do another three double crochets along the line there skip and chain and another three on top of the first three there that you see now when you are doing this make sure you pick up the V of the double crochets on the row below okay chain one skip one three so there's a certain amount of rows that you sort of have to repeat in a particular sequence and after you've done this a couple of times you will you know be able to see where you are where you're at sorry and uh, what you are doing that row so first of all we are doing a row of seven double crochets then 
you do the row of the three, the one and the three, and then you do the row of the seven double crochets again. So it's just, you'll just have to remember, you know, what you're doing at which point where you are in your square. And you're always making a little chain and a double crochet at the end. See? So that's what I've done now. So now we are going to do another row of those sevens again. One, two, three. Always chain three. Then we start with the double crochet into that first one there. And we're doing the seven. And you just go round the chain space for that fourth one there. And then here you do the chain space. And then off you go with your seven again. I mean, to be honest, again, it's quite a mindless thing. You do have to make sure that you know what you're doing on each round. Um, again, this is something that, yes, I bought uh, this color for it because I quite like this color when I saw it. But you can make this from leftovers. Um, we are going to do the stars with all my leftovers because, of course, those are lots and lots of different colors that I'm going to um, bring into the blanket. So, you know, a great stash buster project again if you need this because, like uh, my grandma did, she used different colors for her squares. So, you know, that brings it together like almost like a patchwork blanket. So it's really, you know, an ideal blanket for any, any type. Um, you know, if you've got lots of yarn of the same color, but also if you have yarn, you know, that you need using up. So again, a chain into that second chain there, doing your double crochet, see? And there we have those little boxes appearing that we need for those stars. So now we are going to repeat this row here. So we are making 17 boxes. So you start with three chains, double crochet in that first double crochet, chain, skip a stitch, and into the next one, chain, skip, into the next a double crochet. And soon you'll find out that actually um, you're always doing, let me show you here, so you're always doing a box here and then you're always doing these holes here as well. So you can check your work as you go uh, to make sure that you've done the right line or the right things that you were supposed to be doing. So I am going to continue doing this square. So now that I've done my boxes row again, I am going to be doing that a row of seven again, then the row of three again, then the row of seven again, and then the boxes again. So that way um, you know sort of which row you're doing if you sort of if you know what you're doing and then you remember it by saying okay this is a seven row this is a three row because those are the amounts of double crochets that you are doing in that row. And of course you are starting and finishing with a box each time as well. Okay so this is one section. So now you have to repeat this one two, three, four times in total. So another three times I'm going to have to repeat this and then I will meet you back to do the last row and to start putting the stars on and of course then to put the blanket together. I will see you then. So I have done the four repeats of my sort of little squares in the design of the square and we are going to now finish with doing a row of boxes so three chains and a double crochet on top of that first double crochet and then we are going to just do chain one skip one double crochet chain one skip one double crochet chain one skip one double crochet and yeah, so uh, you just need to make sure that all your little boxes are lined up 
and that you've got holes in all of your little squares inside your square. So we are making sure that the four sides of our square here have all boxes in them because those are going to be needed for putting the blanket together. So I am now going to show you, and I have finished this one here, how to put the stars on. So I am going to be using leftovers. I've got this little box of uh, leftovers, uh, which are really too small to make anything with, but you know, they come in handy for certain things. And uh, you're going to just use a needle. There we go. So that's the end of that square here. There we go. And here I have my box of little leftovers. So I am just going to choose, I mean, to be honest, blind dip is good enough. There we go. Okay. And um, about, uh, it's not a meter, it's not 50 centimeters, it's sort of 90, 80 centimeters uh, you're going to need. Then I have been using a thick. Um, needle here and I just put the yarn onto the needle there we go and we are ready to get started so yeah my grandma did them in sort of every other one uh, I've just chosen three in every um, square to do so I just sort of picked it up put my needle through a hole in the middle of one of those little squares, then pulled it so that I had a, only a little bit left at the end, held it there, and then I just started going in and out al along the perimeter of the little square into every hole and each time into the middle. Don't pull it too tight because otherwise you'll bunch up your squares and don't forget to do the corner ones. Make sure they're lying nicely next to each other. And yeah, so although it is therapeutic, <laughs> this will take a little bit of time. But like I said before, it's a good stash buster blanket. Um, if you have time, if you have some leftovers, make a few, you know, put them away, make a few more put them away you know at, at the end of each blanket that you do if you have some leftovers make a few and then when you have enough put the blanket together so you know it could be quite a therapeutic thing to do and a way to use up leftovers there and then and then bring them all together and you know and the leftovers that are too small to do anything with you can make the stars with see so we're now at the back of the blanket and the thing is, or oh, of the square at the moment, um, yeah, so my grandma used to line these blankets and obviously there's a reason for that. Uh, I'm just tying this closed with a sort of double knot, so I'm wrapping it round twice. And yeah, she must, oh, wrapping it round twice and it didn't work, there we go. So she's done this as well, obviously. Um, and that's probably why she's always used lining um, on the other side because she didn't want you to see the knots on there. Um, I have tried to do it nicely, so I've cut it off quite short. I would put a fleece lining against it actually, um, and that will make it really nice and warm. So if I was to find maybe um, fleece in this color hang on am i working on that yeah so you've got to make sure that you have uh, turn it back over you've got to make sure that you're working on the same side so your knots are all on the same side okay um that's just one thing to keep in mind so yeah i was thinking i could uh, get a piece of fleece about this color and put that against it and i think that would make it a really nice uh, warm blanket and also if you then uh, use it for a play blanket for a baby then you haven't got the holes um, so yeah I don't know maybe and it will be a really warm blanket so lots of possibilities so you can finish it the way you fancy also if you have made one 
if you have done a backing for it or the way you've done it please show me on our Facebook page because it's always lovely to see uh, that actually I give you ideas I tell you how to do the square but then you know obviously you can just take off from there and do your own thing and I am interested in seeing that as well because obviously you know that's more ideas for me as well um, from what I have shown you so yeah there we go so round it twice just so it's a double knot there we go and then I do another one one two there we go and I'll lay it so so yeah it's as good as invisible really I mean you could sew them in but because it's another color I don't know whether that would work Okay, so I've just got one more to do and then sew in these ends and then I will be back ready to assemble the blanket. Okay, so I have sewn in all my ends, I have put on all my stars and I have laid out my blanket ready to be put together. So I have laid them out for by four so in total I have 16 squares I like the randomness of the uh, stars so that's fine and uh, we are going to put them together by doing the same method as my grandma used so I will be sitting down to show you that but basically what we're doing is lines so one there one there and one there and then we do one one and one so you're attaching two sort of rows, then we're attaching a third one onto there and then the fourth one onto there. Then you will have holes there and there and then we will, you know, sew those together as well. So we're doing this in long lines along the blanket. So the way my grandma has put these together these here are the bottoms of a single crochet, so where you, she's gone into it. And then here we have a single crochet, a chain, single crochet, chain, single crochet, chain, and so on. So yeah, um, I've got another blanket where it came undone a little bit, the lining. So I had, but of course now I can't find that bit, can I? Uh, but yeah, so that's what we are going to try and do. And then the same uh, goes for the edge, where I think she did either half double crochets or double crochets. So we'll work that one out when we get there. But yeah, let's get started. Okay, so I have my bottom two squares right next to each other here. I'm going to make a slip knot, insert my hook, and these are the um, fronts. Okay, so what we are going to do is we are going to work on the back. So I'm going to lay them on top of each other like this, then into that those first boxes here, the corner ones. I am going to get started by doing a loose single crochet like that. Chain one into the boxes, loose single crochet. Now I wanted to do this in the same dark orchid color. Oh no, I forgot to do the chain. There we go. But I thought if I do it in a contrasting color, then it shows up better for you guys as well. So I think it'd be nice for it to show up. So not too tight because obviously we are now um, holding our squares together and they need to be opened up. So let's just see. We're not there yet, but let's just see how that works. See, there we go. So you do your single crochets loose, then you pull it a little bit and that's what it's going to look like. And then you have this on the other side. Okay, so what we are going to do is go all the way up that line. So when I finish here, I will bring in the next two, do that and then continue all the way to the top. And then you do that with your third line and your fourth line and so on. So I will meet you when you are doing your horizontal lines. Okay, so I have sewn my squares together 
and if you were lucky enough to be at that live I was doing it during the live as well so yeah uh, I had to undo <laughs> quite a few of them because of course I was talking not paying attention but yes I managed to do it so I did quite a lot actually it's sort of difficult to show up look see so there I've done those and then if we swap it round and you see this is the back okay so um, I am now going to do these ones so I've done the vertical ones so now I am going to do the horizontal ones so my husband just walked in and he said oh that's nice with the spiders on there mm hmm okay they are not spiders darling they are stars thank you very much <laughs> Or at least they could be fireworks as well. <laughs> I'll see you in a moment. Okay, so now we are ready for our horizontal lines. Um, I'm using just a pale pink to put it together. Um, and that's fine, I wanted a contrasting colour. So I'm going to fold this over here and I am going to start crocheting this lot together here. So I'm going to do a slip knot, attach put my hook into it and I am just going to get started into the first one into that first one there and we do a single crochet so once again make sure you do it loose enough so your squares will still lie flat and you go from one box to another by doing single crochet chain one single crochet, chain one, single crochet. There we go. And when I swapped uh, squares, so in between the squares here, I just did a, a, a chain. So basically I just kept going single crochet, chain, single crochet, chain. So fairly simple to put this together. And when I've put this together, I am going to get started on the border. And my plan is to um, do a border with two colors so with the pink and the dark orchid the gonka dark orchid um, my grandma used to do that as well i've got several blankets where she doubled up uh, the yarns to two different colors for the border so that is what i fancy doing today as well Let's see what it looks like there we go that looks good. I will see you in a moment to start the border. Okay, so I have done all my horizontal lines and my vertical lines and this is what my blanket looks like at the back. So I've got quite um, some ridges here. And obviously this is why my grandma lined these types of blankets because yeah it's quite prominent these uh, lines but look this is the front of the blanket and yes indeed this looks much neater and nicer so now we are going to do the border and the example blanket that I've been using this is the border there so I think this is half double crochet, chain, half double crochet. So each time into a box. So that's simple enough. And then here she did two in the corner and then sort of a couple of chains, which in this doesn't sort of, this is a little bit curling up. So we might need to do a couple of more chains in here. But in many of her blankets and in this one, because this is another one, she did hang on a minute oh look <laughs> this is a bit where she did a dark red border but look at this here she's got another bit so she must have run out of yarn and here we've got yarn that's doubled up well I think it is anyway so a lot of the blankets had that uh, where she sort of uh, used a different type of yarn or even doubled up something and then here there's this little bit look at that how sweet that is um, and it's got you know a little bit of a different corner because or 
a little bit of a different bit here because obviously she ran out of yarn so there we go so yeah so we are going to double up on our yarn so we've got the gonka the dark orchid and we've got the pale pink here from a uh, starcraft and i am going to do a slip knot and i'm going to get you started on a corner so that we're off basically so once you know what you're doing you should be fine so here we are we've got the loop around our hook i am using a five because obviously we are now using it two strands together so we need to make sure that um, you know you keep those two strands together and you treat them as one so we are going to just go into one of the boxes and i am going to do a half double crochet make sure you don't lose your yarn over because that's easily done there we go with the first one then we do a chain then we do a half double crochet into the next box chain half double crochet into the next box and chain and so on chain and now we reach the corner so we do our half double crochet in the corner then we need to do about three chains to make sure we have a good corner and then we do another half double crochet and that's taken us around the corner chain one half double crochet chain one half double crochet and that's how we're going to go around the blanket all the way i will meet you when you're back here <laughs> Yes, we have finally made it back to filming because I got covered under the cat. <laughs> so I sat myself down to do that first row here of the border and then my cat came and sat on me and of course you don't want to move them, do you? So I ended up doing three rounds. So yes, I did say I was going to meet you there, but uh, to be honest, when I got there, see, I haven't finished this one properly, so I can show you. Um, I just did uh, my last half double crochet, then in there for a slip, a slip stitch. Okay, so I've got to um, pull this out and uh, sew this one in, but all the rest is sewn in. Now, all the time when I was making this, I was humming and ahhing about, am I going to um, put a backing on this? And yes, I have been to the shop and look at this. I bought some pink fleece because I wanted this color, but they didn't have that. And then this one was the perfect color for this. And yeah, so I have my sewing machine ready. I am going to sew it on. Okay. So, um, doing the border, it do, in the beginning, I wasn't too sure about doubling up those two colors because of the way it looked but because I've done three rows and it's now quite a wide border I am really liking the effect uh, and also because of this it sort of comes back then you know it all yeah I think it all ties it together see so there we go so I'm now going to sew this last bit in and then I am going to attach the fleece to the back. I am going to do it, you know, inside out and then um, sew around there and then have an opening and then pull it back to outside with the nice side showing. So I will see you when I finish doing that. So I am back. I have finished my blanket. So I have lined it with a fleece lining and it's now nice and thick and i bought um, a meter of fleece lining but um obviously i didn't use all of it because my blanket was about 90 by 90 centimeters so i had some left over and i've turned that into a drawstring bag i've got look sugar bag corners at the bottom so i'm just going to put the blanket in there so I have put the blanket inside the bag. It fits really nicely. I didn't put it in all the way, but it goes in all the way. And then I can close it up and I can put it away like that until I need it. 
so thank you very much for watching my journey here uh, with my blanket i hope you enjoyed it and i hope i have inspired you to make a blanket like my grandma used to make them and i will see you in the next video bye